I wish I was good enough not to sound this obvious that I'm reading a script, but hey guys, what is going on? And in this video, I'll teach you how to set up your stream from the very beginning up to all the things you need to know with various options you can choose for your streaming setup as fast as possible. Here are the timestamps for all the things I'll be talking about so that you can watch what you want to watch. But before we start, we should make sure you meet some of the few requirements to provide at least a decent stream quality. And they are 1. Having a CPU and a GPU capable of encoding our stream. And 2. Having a decent stable upload speed. If you think you already have all this, skip to the timestamp on the screen. Now, how should you know if you meet these requirements? Well, that depends on what game you want to stream and what setup you plan to have. MapleStory, for example, can be streamed and played at the same time on a dual-core CPU like the Pentium G4600 without a GPU. I even stream up to For Honor with a Pentium G4560 and a GTX 745, a GPU equivalent to a GTX 550, without dropping any frames. However, newer games such as Fortnite is impossible to stream as this incapable CPU constantly freezes the game and drops frames on the stream. This, however, becomes a different story with a dual PC setup, which I'll get into later in the video. In the end, the only way to find out if you can stream a game is by trying it out. For the upload speed, while a Wi-Fi connection can work, I recommend an Ethernet cable connection for more stable and higher upload speed. How fast it should be depends on your stream setup, which we will get to now. Now that we've got the requirements out of the way, we should now choose a broadcast software. Twitch.tv recommends 8 different softwares to choose from, the most popular being Open Broadcast Software, or OBS for short. The link for this page is in the description. I'll be using OBS for this tutorial, but I recommend Streamlabs OBS as it has more visually appealing features, unless you plan to use the virtual dual PC setup I mentioned before. The two softwares are in fact so similar that this tutorial applies for both of them, except the virtual dual PC setup part. Once you hit download and choose your OS, go ahead and install the program. For this tutorial, we don't need the real send source since I don't know what the hell that is. By this point of the tutorial, you should have an OBS installed and open. Let's go over the settings. I won't go over the general tab as it is not part of setting up the stream. Stream tab is the most important part and this is where we choose where to stream our game. According to Streamlabs, Twitch.tv is the most popular streaming platform, so we will be choosing that. Now that we know where to stream, we need to get the stream key for that service. If you're using Streamlabs OBS, this is already done for you when you log into the app with your streaming account. But for others, and assuming you already have a Twitch account, go to twitch.tv, click on your profile, click dashboard, go to channel under the settings section, and click copy on the stream key. Now that you copy the stream key, go back to your OBS app and paste your stream key in the stream key section. Change your service to Twitch and choose the closest server to your area, and now you can stream to your Twitch channel. But what if I want to stream on two platforms at the same time? This is where Restream.io comes in. It is a service that allows you to stream to multiple platforms simply by registering and editing your channels of the same or different platform. Once you added all of your channels for the platforms you desire, choose the closest server again, and copy the Restream.io stream key and paste this in the stream key section instead. Change your service to Restream.io and now you're sending your stream there to be distributed to all your channels simultaneously. With that done, let's go over to the Output tab. Go up to the Output mode and switch to Advanced. You can experiment with all these settings and believe me I did, and it turns out there's no point in changing them. Just follow exactly what's on my settings except the bitrate. You should change this depending on your internet speed and at what quality you want to stream. I've put a link to an internet speed test website and Twitch.tv's guide on bitrate in the description. These will help you understand what bitrate you need for the quality and resolution you want, and if your upload speed can handle it. If you want a more precise calculation on this, you can check out a bitrate calculator made by Drunkev from the description. I have mine on 3300 kilobit per second for my 720p 30fps stream. It is not necessary to mess with other tabs in the output tabs, so let's go over to the audio tab. Here you simply have to make sure you're on stereo channels and you have enabled the audio devices accordingly. Going over to the video tab, change your output resolution as how you decided when choosing your bitrate. You may have noticed a similar option in the output tab called rescale output. It is recommended for you to not change this in the output tab as this will basically destroy your CPU, or so others have said. Changing it in the video tab makes your GPU work on the resolution instead. For downscale filter, Langkos, or however you call it, looks the best, but the better it looks, the harder it is on your system. 
To check the differences out, go watch this video from the link in the description. Utilize the hotkeys tab for your comfort. As you can see, I have multiple hotkeys to make my stream look professional. The advanced tab should not be touched unless there is a specific problem you have to solve in this tab. Now that we're done setting up our settings, let's actually display our game. The scenes tab lists your scenes, which can be thought as a room. Within a scene, there are sources, which can be thought as furniture inside a room. To display our game, we must add a source to a scene. You do this by clicking the plus button on the source tab and add a game capture. Rename it however you want and press OK. For the mode, we'll be choosing Capture Specific Window as that capture Windows game as well and is more consistent at capturing games in general. As I'm streaming at 720p, I'll check the force scaling and type 1280 x 720 in scale resolution. Click OK and you should be good to go. If the game isn't displaying, pause the video and follow these troubleshoot methods. You may have noticed tons of other sources available to add. You can be very creative with these sources and create a scene like this. How I have this scene set up is with a video loop of my image spinning made with a media source, a small chat box made with a browser source, and so on. You can also bring an entire scene into a scene as a source. For example, the little things is a scene itself, which contains a lot of other sources. Since I use these sources basically for all my other scenes, it is easier to source the scene containing them instead of having to add them over and over again for each scene. That sentence was probably hard to understand, so for now we can just have one gate capture source with one scene. Up to now, we have a basic stream setup for our desired platforms on our desired software. We can take our stream up by a notch by adding Streamlabs elements. You don't need to do this if you've been setting up with Streamlabs OBS. It already provides what pre-built themes you can simply download and use. As for OBS users, we have to head over to Streamlabs.com and log in with our main streaming account. Here are tons of settings we can manage, but for starters, we only need the alert box and the chat box. Go over to the chat box under the widgets tab and design the look. Once that's done, click copy on the widget URL and go back to OBS. Add a browser source and paste the link in the URL section. Choose your dimensions and BAM, we have a chat box. You can apply the same method for alert boxes which displays follower, subscriber, donation, etc. alerts on the screen. Our stream is now beautiful, and this is all you need to know for a single PC setup. But what if we want a dual PC setup? Normally this is done with expensive capture card, but in this tutorial we will be using NDI integration plugin to virtualize such setup for free. This setup requires a fast and stable LAN connection between the two PCs or it won't work at all or smoothly. Make sure you have OBS on both computers and go to the link in the description and download the latest version of the plugin, depending on your OS. Install the program on both PCs and restart them. Once restarted, open OBS for both PCs and click on Tools at the top bar for your gaming PC. You should now see the NDI output settings. Click it and enable main output. Go to your streaming PC and add an NDI source to a scene. You should see the main output name you've set on your gaming PC's NDI output settings in the source name section. If you don't, you probably don't have the two connected in LAN. The sync section is for audio and video synchronization, which you should fiddle with as you find the right setting for you. Once you click OK, you should be able to see your gaming PC scene as a source in your streaming PC. To complete the setup, copy the settings of your gaming PC to your streaming PC. Click Start Streaming on your streaming PC and now you are live. Just remember not to start streaming on your gaming PC. I hope I managed to talk about all the things you need to know to start streaming. If you have any questions or require more detail, leave a comment and I'll do my best to help. If this video helped a lot, it would help me if you leave a like on the video. Thanks for watching and I'll be seeing you on the next video.